Hello everyone and welcome to my part of the presentation. My name is Benjamin, I'm a software developer at the SUR and Center in Zurich. I mainly work in the City Engine team as well as the XR team. So today I'm gonna give you a quick update about what's new with the Datasmith export as well as the City Engine plugins. So let's start with Datasmith. So for Datasmith we've recently added support to export scenes from City Engine directly to Twinmotion. And we've also added support to export City Engine scenarios with the Datasmith exporter. We've also published a blog post which explains how you can automatically replace City Engine assets with high quality Unreal assets. You can uh, find the blog post in the link posted on the slides. So here's a short video showcasing the workflow from City Engine to Twinmotion. So first we start with our scene in City Engine and we export it using the Datasmith exporter and we also select Export Twinmotion compatible. So using this option we can import the Datasmith file directly to Twinmotion but we can also still import it to Unreal Engine. But let's import it to Twinmotion for now. After importing the scene we can start working on it. So we can, for example, replace materials, but we can also replace all the assets in the scene. So here, for example, we start replacing all the trees with high quality twin motion versions. We can do bulk replacements since the trees from City Engine were exported as instances. This makes it very easy to replace all the trees in the scenes with high quality versions. After replacing the assets, we can also scatter foliage on the ground. So we can, for example, add grass to these parks to make it look even nicer. To make the scene feel more alive, we can also add vehicles by using the vehicle tool and simply drawing splines. And in the same way, we can also add people to our area of interest. And finally, once we're happy with our scene, we can start exporting the scene and create nice shots. Twinmotion also supports uh, ray tracing to create stills which look uh, even nicer. Two of these stills are shown now. So now I quickly want to showcase how we can export scenarios from City Engine to Unreal Engine. So in City Engine we can design different scenarios and typically when we want to export those scenarios in a third party application, multiple exports were needed. So one for the surrounding buildings and then one for each scenario. But with Datasmith we can just select the export scenarios checkbox and all the scenarios will be exported as one, including the surrounding buildings. So now we can import the single Datasmith file into Unreal Engine and we get this level variant sets file which we can open and now we can also switch through the different scenarios in the same way as we can in City Engine. The nice thing about this is we can also access this level variant set in blueprints so we could switch through scenarios uh, in game using blueprints. So next I quickly want to show a video showcasing the workflow we've developed for asset replacements in Unreal Engine. So with this workflow we can basically replace materials or meshes inside of a Unreal scene which comes from City Engine. 
So basically how this works is we select the asset we want to replace, here for example a material, and then we select a high quality Unreal version, and we also select a data asset where we want to store this replacement. So the nice thing about this is once we've set up all of these replacements, we can reuse them later in a different project. So we only have to do this once. So here, for example, we set up replacements for all the trees from the city engine scene, as well as for most of the materials from, from the streets and the buildings. So now that we are happy with the replacements, we can execute them in the scene. For this we have to select all the data assets where the replacements are stored and then we can press apply in the execute replacements dialog which will execute all the replacements. So if you're interested to know more about this workflow you can read the blog post which I mentioned before and there you can also download all the projects. So next I want to talk about what's new with the City Engine plugins. So if you're interested in these plugins, uh, you can visit this link where you can find all the information about the plugins, the new releases, as well as all the example projects. So let's start with Palladio, the plugin for Houdini. So for Palladio we will release a version 2.0 very soon. So this version will support Houdini 19 and 19.5 as well as work with City Engine RPKs from City Engine version 2022.0. So the major new change with this release will be the new attribute editor, which you can see on the right hand side. For Serio, the plugin for Maya, we've also just released a new major version 2.0 with UX improvements. So for example, we can now reset attributes from the UI and there's warnings and error display from root packages or asset errors. We've also released a new example project, the street segment example, which you can see on the right hand side. So for Vitruvio, the plugin for Unreal Engine, with the latest release, we've improved the Blueprint API support. So this means we can now more easily modify rule attributes from within blueprints or we can also regenerate buildings from blueprints. We've also added support for CGI reports which can also be accessed from blueprints and displayed in Unreal UMG widgets. For our next release we're working on performance improvements for large scenes. For Puma, the plugin for Rhino and Grasshopper, uh, we're also working on a minor release and this release will also include improvements to the rule attribute UI. So for PyPRT, we will also release a new version very soon, which will support RPKs from CD Engine 2022.1. And with this release, we will also publish a new example, which you can see on the right hand side which demonstrates how you can iteratively update a scene layer from within PyPRT. And finally, for the Omniverse connector, we will also release a new version for City Engine 2022.0, which can be downloaded from the Omniverse website. So that's already it. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email.